Cork has powerful mechanisms for induction and recursion. We're going to look at induction in the case of natural numbers. Natural numbers are actually defined in the standard Cork library, but we're going to do everything by hand and closely mimic what is done in the standard library. An inductive definition of a set starts with inductive, and then you say what it is you want to define. It doesn't have to be a set, it could be some other more complicated object, but right now we're just defining a set. And here now we list the cases, all the ways of generating elements of n. So one way is to say 0, 0 is an element of n, and there is a constructor, successor, which takes a natural number and it returns a natural number. This is it. I have now defined the set n inductively. Cock generated induction and recursion principles. Let's look at one of them. What is print? Well, what is n in? We print it out. This is the usual induction principle for natural numbers. Look, it's here. It says for any propositional fun function p, if p of zero holds and whenever p of n holds, then p of successor of n holds. And so then n hold, p holds of all natural numbers. It really is the usual induction principle. We can also define functions by recursion. We use the fixed point definition for that. Here is how you would define addition. So addition takes two arguments, m and n. And now I want to define addition by considering what m might be, so it's by cases. So here's how you do a definition by cases. You say match m with, and you consider what m could be. m is either 0, in which case the result is n, or it's successor of some m prime, in which case the result is the successor of plus m prime n. And then you have to have an end at the end of match. So this is the definition of plus. Let's show that plus is commutative. So I do intras because it's a for all statement. And now I have to prove something by induction here. That's about the only thing I can do. I will do induction on m, it doesn't matter which one because of symmetry, so I say induction on m and Koch will automatically generate the base case and the induction step. This is the base case. So first I simplify to compute a little bit and now I have to prove, let's see, n plus n, n equals plus n zero. I could do induction on n right here in the middle of the proof, but instead I'm going to take my statement and prove it as a separate lemma out here. this. I know this is going to be induction on m, so I will, I'm not even going to do intros, I will just say induction on n. I get the base case, which is easy, so auto will do it. Here, first I simplify, and now I see that what I have to prove is essentially a successor applied to both, to both sides of my induction hypothesis. So the way <coughs> to tell Cock what to do at this point is to say strip away successor. The um, tactic which does that is f equal. So f equal will strip away successor. It will say in order to prove this it is sufficient to prove that n equals plus n zero. But then I say this is assumption and cock is happy. So now we can go back to our main proof and say we prove this as a separate lemma plus n zero. Now we're in the induction step so again, first we simplify, and now we have to look at this a little bit. Now the thing I don't like here is that here I have m and n, but on the other side I have n, m. So I really don't want this to be switched around like that. I would prefer to have plus m, n, n, m here, which I can do because I have the induction hypothesis that tells me that m and n commute. So now I want to tell Koch, replace plus m, n with plus n, m. And the tactic to do that is rewrite. I say rewrite, and when rewrite takes an equation, and then it will use the equation 
to rewrite from left to right. So it will find in here the left hand side of IHM and it will rewrite it to the right hand side. There are other more complicated uses of rewrite that we're not going to get into right now. Maybe I'll just mention that if I wanted to rewrite from right to left, then I could write it like this. I give it the direction. There we go. It applied the uh, induction hypothesis. And now I have, again I have to do this by induction. And again I'm going to do it as a separate lemma. Like this. So let's see. Well, at this point, I could try simple, but nothing happens. I have to do an induction. Which induction? It could be M or it could be N. Um, if you make the unlucky case, you will it'll get complicated. But here you should suspect that it's better to perform induction on the first argument of plus, because plus recurses on the first argument. So I'm going to do induction on N like this. This is the base case, which I hope will go away with auto. Indeed it does. And now, what could we do? Well, first we do simplify to see if that helps. Aha. Uh -huh. So now I have successor of this equals successor of that. Again, I could use f equal to get rid of the successors, and I get exactly the induction hypothesis again. So down here, now I can apply my lemma. So we get here first, and now we apply, and we are done. That went very well, so we're going to do another thing. Let's try to show something about binary trees. First we define the binary trees. The set of binary trees is defined inductively as follows. The empty tree is binary tree, so the constant empty denotes the empty tree. And there is a constructor called node, which takes two subtrees and composes a tree which has those given two subtrees as the left and the right subtree. Let's look at the induction principle for trees. So now we say if P is a property of trees then if P holds of the empty tree and whenever it holds of both subtrees it holds of the whole tree. This is what this here says. This is the induction step. It says if P of T holds and p of t0 holds, then p holds of the composed tree. So it's like the induction for natural numbers, but it has two predecessors. Well, if this and that holds, then p holds for all trees t. We can define functions by recursion. For example, here's the function which computes the size of a tree. The size is the number of the nodes. The empty tree doesn't have any nodes, so the size is zero. But if I have a com tree composed of t1 and t2, then the size is the successor of the sum of sizes t1 and t2. And I have to have end at the end of the match statement, like this. Let me also define another function which swaps the left and the right subtrees and then it calls itself recursively on them. So in the empty tree there is nothing to swap but if I have a tree composed of t1 and t2 then swap will swap them around and call itself recursively. I'm defining all this so that we can solve the following exercise. If I have a tree, then its size is the same as the size of the swapped tree. How would we do that? So it's a for all, so I do intro. And now I have to do induction on t. I will get again the base case and the induction step. The base step could, should be easy, so I just do auto and it goes away because it computes that both sides are the same. Now I'm performing the induction step and notice how I have two induction hypotheses, one for each of the subtrees. I will first simplify to see what goes on here. Okay, 
So it says the successor of this equals the successor of that. I'll use f equal to get rid of the successors. Now I have plus of this equals plus of that, but now it would be wrong to use f equal again, because f equal will say, in order to prove that these two are equal, you have to show that size of t1 equals size of swap t2, and that's not something that actually holds. What I need to do first is I have to turn around the arguments of this plus, so I have to do it with an intermediate step. I have to show first that plus size t1 size t2 equals plus size t2 t1, and the tactic which inserts something here in the middle is called transitivity. So I will do transitivity with plus size t2 size t1. That would be one way to do it. And now I would just use commutativity of plus to do this. Or I could do, or I could rewrite using plus. So I can say rewrite using the fact that plus is commutative. This is a little riskier because I don't know which is exactly which one it's going to choose, but I'm hoping it's going to choose this one. It did. Okay, so that was good. Now I can strip plus. I get two sub goals. The size of T2 equals the size of swap T2, but that's exactly one of the induction hypotheses. And the other one is of the same kind. So I know that after F equal, I'm going to say, well, what you're going to get are assumptions. So in each case, just use the assumption. And we're done.